everyone and welcome to another Night Sky with Naz. This week I'm going to be showing you how you can find the star Vega in the constellation of Lyra. And that's because this week we're going to have the Lyrid meteor shower. So it's called the Lyrid meteor shower because it's going to look like there's a lot of shooting stars coming from the constellation of Lyra the harp. However, Shooting stars are called shooting stars, but they don't actually have anything to do with stars at all. They are called that because they do look like a point of light, like the stars, shooting across the sky. But they are actually small bits of rock that are entering the Earth's atmosphere. Now most of these bits of rock are really, really tiny, about the size of a grain of sand, but some of them are a little bit bigger, and that is, those are the ones that produce the really bright shooting stars. So the peak of this meteor shower is on the 21st, the night of the 21st and the morning of the 22nd of April. So that is what we're going to be looking for. But I'm going to show you how to find Lyra to begin with, and we're going to do that by using Stellarium. So going on to Stellarium, I want you to find which way north is. Now if you remember how to find the north star, we're going to use that same method to find the north star again. So we're going to draw a line through the, the end of the panhandle of the Big Dipper. We're going to go through the panhandle into the pan itself and eventually to the last two star in the pan. And then we're going to continue with this line into the sky, straight across the sky, and it's going to lead us to the next brightest star that gives us the North Star. And the closest horizon to this star, so the ground that's closest to this star, is our northern horizon. So once you've found north, I want you to find east. East is at a right angle to the right of north. So if you put north where your left shoulder is, then you'll be looking east. And halfway between north and east is where I want you to be looking. So go back to halfway in between these two points. And that is when you'll be looking northeast. Northeast is where you will find the star Vega. Now Vega is really bright because it's only about 25 light years away. If you remember how fast light travels, it goes at around 300 million meters per second. But even traveling at that speed, it would take us 25 years to reach this star. But in terms of the distances to things in space, that is actually quite close to us. And that is why this star is so bright in the sky. So once you found Vega, the constellation that Vega is in is called Lyra, and this is where the shooting stars are going to appear to come from. So once you found Lyra in the sky, that is the direction you want to be looking in, but I don't want you to be looking directly at the horizon to see the shooting stars. Once you're looking in that direction, I want you to just look straight up into the sky and give yourself a wider field of view as possible of the entire sky, maybe even lay down a blanket in your back garden and look straight up into the sky. And within a few minutes, you might even be able to see a shooting star because they do happen a lot more often than people think. But if you do manage to see a really, really bright one, then you actually are probably looking at a Lyrid meteor. So the reason why these rocks burn up in our atmosphere when they enter is because out there in space, they're traveling at around 40 to 70,000 miles per hour. Now your car at home goes around 70 miles per hour at its fastest. So imagine what 70,000 miles per hour feels like. They are going really, really fast out there in space. But once they enter our atmosphere, they experience a lot of air resistance. Now you will have felt air resistance if you've ever stuck your hand out of the car window when you've been driving. You will have felt that air resistance against your hand. But imagine going 70,000 miles per hour, that air resistance is really quite a lot. So because the air resistance is a lot, it heats up that bit of rock and it sets it on fire. And that ball of rock that is on fire in the sky is what you see as a shooting star. And that's what you're going to be looking for this week. So I want you to head out there and see how many shooting stars you can spot over the course of the week. I hope you get some clear skies and happy observing. 